Welcome to the Tony Olson Fishing Show. This one is for pike fishermen, or people that want to go and catch the pike, which is our freshwater predator. Now, there's live bait fishing, there's dead bait fishing, there's lure fishing, that's what the pike take, those three. But for some obscure reason, here in the British Isles, live bait fishing can get very emotive. Now, I think there are a few countries in the world that don't allow live baiting. There's far more countries that do allow live baiting. In fact, it seems a bit weird to me because, let's face it, the pike is supposed to go around uh, only eating sickly and injured fish, which of course is absolute rubbish. They will eat injured and sickly fish, the same as the, the lions and the Serengeti plain will always target a weaker animal first. A young one, an old one, a sickly one, fine, I see that, but they will take down full-on big buffalo, wildebeest, that type of thing. In fact, their main diet is probably that. Same with the pike. They're killing and eating fish all the time. Most days, something's going get, to get killed underwater. So why are we so tied up with it? Well, we must have live bait. Look, the reason I think, well, this is how I see it in the UK, live bait fishing really is restricted because they don't want the transfer of live baits from one water to another, in let's say buckets, because you could transfer a disease to other fish stocks. That I see fully. Some waters, some clubs do ban live bait fishing. Loads of them don't. Loads of them allow live bait fishing. So for those who want to go live bait fishing, I thought I'll give you some tips. Now, we're going to be doing float fishing with a live bait. I don't personally in fact, barely once, maybe twice a year, I might live bait. Most of the times, I don't live bait. The reason being because I can't make that live bait really go where I want it to go. And I can do that with a twitch dead bait. I can put it in the water and I can make it sort of tweak around in the areas and leave it there as long as I can. A live bait generally will swim into an area and if there's a bike in there, uh oh, can you blame him? He wants to go the other way. So what exactly is a bite indication look like when you have a float? Well, a lot of guys say, as soon as the float's gone, wind down and strike. A lot of the time, you will miss a fish doing that because I only use a single hook or a single small treble. Just lip hook the fish so you have to let them turn the bait. But of course, you can judge whether it's a big fish or a small fish. If the float goes under and it jolts up and down like this, that is a pike trying to turn the bait. Each time you see a bob on the float like that, the pike, let's say, if it's a small bait, and a double figure pike eats it, whoosh, it'll go under the float, goes boom, away it goes nice and smooth, sign of a big fish. If it goes under and within a second pops up and keeps doing this, that's a small pike trying to turn the bait like this. Each little jerk is a turn of the bait. Let me show you what I mean. I actually did get some footage of it for you, specifically for you guys, beginners, to see exactly what it looks like when a pike is turning the bait. This is what it looks like. So here's a, a live bait under the float. Now just watch for the impact. Watch for the hit from the pike. It's coming right now. Just watch that for bang. If you saw that, you saw the pike grab the bait. Now I move the camera and I watch each judder. You see how this little jumping action of the float? Now that's where the pike is trying to turn it in his jaws. And once he's turned it in his jaws, the float will sink away slowly, just like that under the surface. And when it holds it under the surface, that's when you can afford to wind down. Even so, just watch. Ping. The bait pulls out. The reason being, I'm only on a single hook at the front of the bait. Didn't allow it long enough time to turn it and get that hook just inside its jaws. Rehook it, get it straight back out again. Same spot. And if you haven't moved that pike too much, the chances are good. You'll get another take. Now here you can see a free swimming live bait just under its own steam going along the edge of the reed bed, a perfect place. You want to keep it about two feet out from the reed bed. Don't let it go into the reed bed. It will want to go in there for protection, but don't forget, if it does, you'll get snagged up. Here we go again. Now watch this, there's the hit. That's the pike grabbing the bait. Now this time, there's one jump. Now watch the float carefully. Second jump, he's turning it in his jaws. He's just still holding it in his mouth. Now, watch the float under the water, bang. You can see it there, that's the pike taking and turning the bait. Just pause, wind down, and strike on the fish. With a bit of luck, you should have a hookup. You do not want to leave it a long time, 
because that way you just get a deep hook fish and that's a pain to get out. Of course, with a single treble, it's much easier. You can turn around the hook with a pair of long nose forceps and get it out. If you strike too soon and you do miss a fish, very often I tend to feel it's a small fish anyway, especially if you're using a live bait like say, I don't know, a three or four inch roach. I do not use huge live baits. I don't like using large live baits. Here we go guys, just a single uh, treble on there. And I'll show you the fish. A nice fish, I guess he's around about eight pound or so, something like that. And I was lucky there, it was a last bait, proverbial last cast. So actually got lucky for a change. There's nothing better than a nice small live bait. And don't be upset using these guys because this is what the pike is eating and the catfish and the sander and the perch every single day. Try and get your live bait in little gaps in the rushes, near lily beds, near any feature you can, but you need to hold the rod and control it to stop the float going right in the snag. All right, here's a totally awesome tip. We used to do this years ago with pilchard oil. Now I use my own raptor oil, which I make. And that is, if you've got a live bait, why not give it a smearing of whatever oil you fancy. Get that out of the way. I'll show you on this one. We used to just smear it over the bait, hook it up, smear it over the bait like this. So there's your bait. Bit of weed on it. Not much left of this one. He's, he's had a bit of exercise. And you can either dip it in, live bait, but obviously this one's... Well, he's nearly kaput this one, so I'm using this so I don't get oil flicked all over me. You see it dripping off, and when I put it in the water, you want to see it. Now, we also used to rub it all over the float as well years ago, but just watch this when it goes in the water. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Woo, 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 even the dog likes it. Watch this, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll just zoom in on that. That is just natural fish oil. My own mate, but you can use pilch doll, and there's the date. Look, you can see what that's doing. Hang on a minute, my float missing. Wait a minute, guys, I've lost my other float. Let's pick this out there. Something's missing here, something's adrift. I'm going to spin that camera around and zoom that back. I think, I think I'm missing a float. Here's that. There he goes. I'm going, to hit, I'm going to hit this straight away, guys. Where the hell is it? No, missed him. Missed him again. No, that was definitely, definitely a take. Bait's gone. I'd already put that out with the raptor oil on it, so it shows you. It's always worth a little bit of fish oil on there. Works wonders. If you want to see it on the surface. Very pretty. What you have to do when you're having a scrap there, a good scrap of the pike, is try and keep it away from any snags. It's no different to any other fish. It's going to want to get in those rushes, in the lily beds, around tree roots. You know, you could have some uh, sunken trees out there, in different types of water you fish. Don't be afraid to put an opposite strain to where the fish is going. So if the fish is going to the right, you want to pull it to the left with what's called side strain. You lay the rod over sideways, pull it away from that snag, then ease off on the pressure, and if it goes the other direction, swing the rod over to the right hand side, and you can gradually ease it away from, say, those rushes or that bank where it's going there at the moment. Take your time. There's no rush with pike fishing. They're a big, powerful fish. I mean, obviously, if you're catching three or four pounders, you're gonna get them, no problem at all, probably, but occasionally, you will get a bigger fish, and let's face it, a fish of 10, 15, or even 20 pounds is incredibly powerful, puts a bend in the rod, and even if you're lucky like this one, swims straight in the net. They don't fare well out of water. Get them unhooked, get them back in the water as quick as you can. In hot summer days, definitely 
They want to be in the water as fast as you can. In the winter, they fare a bit better. They like cold water. Another totally awesome tip, guys. You can either use a stop knot or a split shot there to stop your float. But you might find, especially if you're fishing, say, five feet of water, three feet deep, you've got the bait down three feet, and you've got the shot bogged up here underneath the float to let that bait swim around. If it's too active, it won't want to go down deep. And if it won't want to go down deep, there's a reason for that. And that's because there's a pike down there that wants to eat it. So to pin it down a bit more, I take the shot from here and I can put it, just slide it. Might want to loosen it. Another trip to the dentist. Loosen it, slide it down. Either one or two SSGs on a decent sized bait. Maybe just one, look, I'm about, what's that say? 10 inches in the hook. So that would at least help to pin it down and that bait can only come up here. If he, if he, if he does go higher, he's gonna come up slower because he's towing that little bit of weight with him and that's put him in the target zone of the pike a little bit longer. You're basically pinning him down in there in the target zone of the pike, the predators, and hopefully it'll help you get a take. Don't forget, that's quite important. Otherwise the bait's gonna swim near the surface all day long. fish on these pig mother line up as well. Well there we go, shows you that live baiting works guys. After that big pike, first cast, doesn't even make a change to get an early fish. Got the hook out fine. Not a giant, but listen, it's another fish. Another one bites the dust. Can't wait to get another fish out there. Swimming around and let him do his work. Another tip guys is if you're moving around a lot mobile, because the float, you don't need buzzers, you don't need rod rests, you can have them if you want, but you can just put your rod down like a lot of guys do. If you put it down with the bail arm open, because I don't, I rarely use a bait runner at all, is I leave the bail arm open, you want to make sure that you leave it on the ground while you're watching the float, so the bail arm is not this way, because when you lay it down on the glass, it might flip closed, and then your rod disappears, that's not good at all. So we do the sea fishing, it's just standard the sea fishing when you're fishing off piers and harbours and rocks, is to put the bail arm open at the top of the reel so it rests like this and that way a fish can take line and it doesn't trip accidentally. Small tip, could be a big, save you a big problem. Here's a totally awesome tip. On small waters like this, you might get one or two pike, even if you're lucky, from the same swim. Now those pike are in there for a reason. They're there because there's small roach, small bream, any bait fish are in that particular area. That's why there's two pike. I will very often rest that because I feel there might be even more pike in there. So don't be afraid to sort of leapfrog, as we used to call it, down a long canal section, along a river, along a still water, around a lake, keep moving and moving. If you do catch a pike, try again. If you get two pike and then it goes quiet, just move away, try different swims, and then later in the afternoon, come back. And very often, those pike have settled down again, the bait fish have settled down again, and you can often get a pickup almost straight away. So what I'm saying is there might not just be one or two pike in a swim. If there's a lot of roach, a lot of live bait, and bait fish, fodder fish as we call them, prey fish in that area, I can assure you the pike, the perch, the zander, maybe even a big catfish is in there around those shoals. If you find the shoals of bait fish, that's halfway to the success of pike fishing. Make sure you unhook the pike with a pair of long curved forceps. The curve in the forceps actually allows you to get hold of the shank or bend of the hook and turn the hooks inside out. You can see there a big jaw, not a particularly big pike, just a regular average nice pike. Most still waters are going to have these in them and rivers as well. Make sure you get them straight back in the water and they swim away. Just hold them and let them go away under their own power. 
just feed those baits out and try and get them working in the area you want them to work in, if it's at all possible. As I mentioned previously, the problem and the reason really why I don't do any live baiting more than about once or twice a year is because I can't make the live bait go where I want it to go. You can help it on a big water by doing something what we call degreasing the line from the float for the first 30 yards and that way the line, the main line, is floating on the surface, the wind catches it and you can in fact make that bait sort of be dragged across the wind and into areas you might want to fish. On the other hand we can often degrease it and fish with a lead at the bottom called a float pattern oster and anchor a bait in a swim where you know the pike are. It's all about location. If you find the bait fish, invariably you'll find the pike. And just look at the leeches on this pike. They're generally on the belly. Mostly it happens in the winter when they're laying deep in the uh, uh, bellies in the mud. And that's uh, a sign to keep your baits deep if you've got uh, a chance. Flood's just gone again, guys. I've just moved down, further down this uh, stretch. Uh, baits went to sleep on me, which basically means they probably died. Put two fresh ones on. One I've cast down there, one here. Went into the rushes, as live baits do. I pulled it back as I did, boom, got nailed. Just check the drag. I think we'll see if we can hook him. Doesn't feel a big fish because I can feel him bumping and swimming around a lot. No, he's not small. It's okay. Fish is a fish. Just hanging in the scissors there, absolutely hanging. Try and lift this one for you. Nice little fish. It is slippery. Stop it, stop it, stop it. They want to see you on YouTube, please. Now smile for the cat. He's even smiling for you, look. There we go. And always look out for somewhere like this bay, a perfect place either side in the corner for roach to shoal up, or indeed around the roots of this tree, which will grow out underneath the water. The left hand side is where I want to drop a pipe bait if I can, as close as I can, a foot or so out, and the same on the right hand side. Both good fish holding spots. Guys, I was just lifting the bait up, just lifting it, barely getting it out of the water. Hopefully you can hear this because I've got diggers and everything working here. I saw the flash of the pike, it was about six pounds, put it right under my feet. Gonna hit him straight away. Oh, nice fish, nice fish, nice fish. Oh, 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 oh. it's a nice one. Right on my feet. Oh, he's taking me to rushes. Still got my other rod out there. Nice pike, this one. Could be pike of the day for me. He stays on. Net, net, net. Net's behind the camera tripod. Jump on. It's tight fishing here, but I tell you what, you can't say they're not in here, can you? Say. This is number seven, and that's a today session. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! I'm going to show you the fish quickly. You won't be able to hear anything otherwise. They've actually turned it off for me. There is a really nice pike. You can't, you can't argue about that one. It's a nice fish. Very, very pleased with that one. Right, right at my feet and a tiny three inch roach. Just so I'm gonna lift it out of the water and chuck it out again. So don't neglect those margins along the edge of rushes. I'll get this chappy back. Pike number seven. Hope you've enjoyed watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Some tips on live bait in there. And of course, I'm not going home yet.
And once you get the hooks out, I will suggest leaving the forceps closed and locked on to the hook. That way you know where the hook is. And look at the wonderful camouflage markings on this tail there, all the way along the flank. It all helps them to blend in with their background and they just lay in amongst weed, in amongst the edge of those rushes, anywhere they can that's really producing a, a point at which they can get a short turn of speed, burst out and surprise their prey, grab it in a flash. That's why most of the fins are at the back of the pipe for power. Now, when you see that float go, if you don't actually see it all the time, you can feel the line with your finger and you can feel that bumping where the pike is trying to turn the bait gradually just wind down and you can even feel it through the rod top before you set the hook when you're happy he's got the bait wind down and give it a good strike and set that hook in the fish then you should be okay and hopefully you're going to land it